Welcome to a new episode of the Excel Magazine podcast. I am Diana Oleni, your host, and today we're going to be speaking about Future World Studios. His founder is Raghu Batina, and Future World Studios is dedicated to create compelling 3D visual experiences for patients and clinical staff, which increase procedure volumes and reduce the cost of training. They are specialized in patient engagement by educating and empowering patients, which means in the actual system of pre-procedure, in-procedure, and post-procedure, as well as clinical training for training doctors and medical staff. And last but not least, they are also very focused on digital therapy, which helps patients to reduce anxiety, reduce stress, and reduce delirium. Basically, today we're going to be discussing about Raghu and his journey through the creation of this amazing solution as well as another one that is very exciting. Raghu is the CEO and co-founder of Conquest VR, which is on a mission to dramatically improve virtual reality experiences by delivering truly immersive sound. So Raghu leads the Conquest VR team as well, which has more than 40 years of combined VR experience and is now working to enhance the VR experience through immersive audio for multiple audiences. The company's products like the Conquest Pro headphones will significantly improve gameplay and competitiveness for VR gaming enthusiasts. Additionally, the products are making VR training and educational experiences much more engaging and impactful. Raghu is also the co-founder, as I mentioned, from Future World Studios that is dedicated to VR-based medical applications. So I cannot wait to start discussing this incredible interview and let's do it. Thank you so much, Raghu, for being here today. I'm super excited. Please let us know, how are you doing today? Doing great, Diana. Very excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we're going to start speaking about some super, super exciting topics. The first one is about Future World Studios. So please let us know, Raghu, how did you get started with this amazing enterprise? Sure. Sure. So Future World Studios is a company we started about four years ago. Me and my partner, he's a physician. Um, and we wanted to do something with XR, really it was VR at the time, in the medical space. And um, Future World Studios was focused on helping medical device companies better explain their technology to doctors as well as to patients. So large medical device companies like Boston Scientific and Medtronic, both of you who are our customers, um, make you know new devices all the time. Um, and when they make a new device, they spend hundreds of millions of dollars on it. But um, the explanation of how the technology works is often lost when it's being translated to patients. So they'll create you know pretty brochures, they'll create websites. Uh, videos, but, um, you know, patients are still like, well, I'm not sure how this works. So we actually started out creating patient uh, engagement experiences in VR. And this is something that's very powerful. As you guys, as you, you, you know, VR is amazingly immersive and it's, um, it's an amazingly convincing paradigm. When you get somebody into VR, you have their attention, right? For five, seven, eight minutes. And so in that experience, when you can explain to a patient what's going to happen to them before, during, and after a procedure, it's very, it's, it's amazingly comforting. And also they feel very knowledgeable when they come out of that. So that's, that's part of what we do uh, in Future World Studios is this patient education, patient engagement. And, uh, several companies, Stimwave and Medtronic, both have used us to help explain to patients. The other thing that's interesting is, when a patient sees a doctor, many times the doctor has to explain the procedure to them. 
And, you know, in today's world, doctors are very busy. They don't have enough time. So mm-hmm. they'll kind of do a two-liner or they'll have the, the nurse try to explain it. And patients uh, are nervous. They're nervous to ask too many questions. They'll be like, oh, okay, I kind of understand, but I'll think about it, you know, because they're, they don't, you know, they can see the doctor is busy. They don't want to, you know, you know, upset the doctor. So they won't really get their questions answered, which means they won't really go for the procedure, especially for electives, where what we saw happen is once we created in VR, the doctor just says, hey, listen, I'll be with you in five minutes. In the meantime, just watch this VR experience. And in those five minutes, now the patient's doubts are clear. They feel much more educated and empowered. Then the conversation when the doctor comes back is much more intelligent and, um, you know, really moves them to the next step. Um, so so that, that's one of the key things we did in Future World Studios. And it was all done in virtual reality using Unity, uh, animation, you know, uh, 3D assets and, and so on and so forth. So. That's super exciting. And I have to say that while you were explaining that, I felt totally related. That is yeah. me. That patient that you described is me. Yeah. Pretty much all the time that I've been, when they explain things, I can see their busyness. I can see the nurse trying to explain. I can see myself saying yes, but I didn't understand mm-hmm. really. Right. It's just so it's like a formality that you say yes, but you're not going to ask so many times because also you don't want to look like you don't get it. And yeah. so definitely they speak another language, which is their scientific language, their technical language, their professional language. And when it comes to us as patients, we are pretty much like, you, you, like you see if you get it or not. Right. So I think that these type of solutions are pretty compassionate, actually, like trying right. to bring us the other side of the, of the, of the equation in these type of services to a real participation and understanding of what is going on. Yes, so I really yes. appreciate a lot these type of solutions. Yes, yes, and yes, there is I, one, yeah. yeah. And there is Go one ahead. that I like to highlight, yeah. which is digital therapy which I believe you also help when reducing anxiety, stress. Yes. And one that I read that I found very interesting is reducing delirium. So could yes. you let us know about what is this and how it affects the ICU patients? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes. So um, uh, delirium is uh, also known as ICU psychosis, um, which is unfortunately a side effect of when patients are brought to a hospital or they go through a surgery and they have complications and they have to go to the intensive care unit, the ICU, which monitors them on a second by second basis, right? Um, It's actually a good thing because we're making sure nothing happens to the patient and there's nurses always available, doctors always available. Um, But one of the negative things, and you could be in an ICU after a car accident. I mean, you may not need a procedure. It's just something happens and you're in the ICU. Unfortunately, um, what ICU psychosis or also called delirium is when you're in the ICU for an extended period of time, right? Let's say more than two days, you lose track of time. Your circadian rhythm gets lost, meaning that you lose track of day and night. Um, and then slowly you, you lose track of reality. Um, and, 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 and then it takes a while to get the patient out of delirium. Mm-hmm. Um, and all of this costs a lot of money and a lot of suffering for the patient and their family. And it delays their actual treatment, right? They may have been in there because of the car accident, but a few days later, now, uh, the staff is dealing with delirium rather than the car accident. Um, and, and it, it's, it's a crazy phenomenon. So, um, and it, it's a, it's a big problem, affects people all over the world. And it's primarily because in an ICU, if you notice there's sound continuously, there, the lights are on all the time. You're in a room, you don't even know what's happening in the outside world. A um, lot of disturbed sleep, uh, you're on medications. So, uh, you're not in touch with your family. So this is where slowly the reality starts to slip. Um, and so what we did was we actually created a VR experience, which could be given as a digital therapy um, to ICU patients to re to re uh, sync them with time. So kind of get their circadian rhythm back in sync. So if you can imagine you're a patient, you're in the ICU uh, at about 9 a.m., a nurse or somebody will come by and put on a VR headset 
Um, and then suddenly you're transported to a park, uh, a park in the morning where the sun is coming up and there's children running around and playing and people are going for their walk. Um, and then in the afternoon, that's 15 minutes, right? And then in the afternoon, again, somebody puts on a VR headset and now you're at lunch or you're on a busy street with cars moving up and down and people are going about their day. And then in the evening, one more experience, which is a nighttime experience, right? Maybe near a movie theater or shops um, and, and to give you a feeling of what nighttime is. Mm -hmm. and, and this is just repeated on a daily basis. It's like three 15-minute experiences, uh, very non-invasive. They just put it on and listen. They don't have to do anything. Um, we actually did a study. Uh, with about 20, I forget the total number of patients that were, that were in it. Um, and it, we actually showed improvement in the patient's ability to get over delirium nice. uh, or th their, uh, how quickly they could get over it. Uh, we even, we even have a patent on the technology and everything, but more importantly, um, we have to do more work, but VR, digital therapies, I mean, this is the future. Uh, there's yeah. so much potential. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm super excited about that topic. That's why I, I brought it uh, forward. I mm -hmm. actually personally, I'm an engineer and I study this topic a lot. And I've made my my way to say everything that I create is going to be in the specific niche of digital therapy. So that's why I'm super excited about that. Okay. Well, yeah. you, should, you should then uh, attend uh, VMED 23, Virtual Medicine 23, VMED 23. Uh, and anybody, anybody, any of your viewers, listeners, yeah. VMED, VMED 23, just check it up. It's held in Los Angeles. It'll be in March of this year. Uh, it's run by a friend of ours, Brennan Spiegel, who is a gastroenterologist at Cedar sinai Hospital. Yeah. He has um, written a book called VRX, which is all about virtual therapies. Oh, uh, VR wow. can be used for therapies. They, he studies in that book, there's like 5,000 case studies Ooh, on how you. VR is used for anxiety, for depression, Absolutely. Uh, for identity disorder, for pain. It's a fascinating book. You would love it. If you're interested yeah, in digital therapy, you, you should read VRX and you should come to VMED 23. We're also oh, going to be there. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to speak to you about this um, a little bit later on because this is super exciting. But in the meantime, for any yes. of the listeners, Pay attention because VR therapy is going to be, digital therapy is going to be the way of the future for even undertaking this type of treatments at home, which is something that is going to even enhance more the therapy because you're going to feel familiar in an environment. Sometimes when we're in hospitals, for some reason, we feel that something is wrong and it doesn't help. But when we are familiar with our environments, that might change. So thank you so much yes. for bringing that forward. And there is something super interesting that really I cannot wait to get into this, which is that in our development processes, I particularly use Unity, um, we tend as developers to leave the sound to the last minute to when we are um, undertaking you know, our workflows. Right. But we are here today with Raghu, who very kindly decided to speak to us about his experience and his insights and et cetera on how to properly use audio in VR. So please yes. let us know, Raghu, about this topic. What what do you have to say about it? Thank you. Sure, 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 sure. So um as a as a VR developer ourselves, um, you know, audio uh you know, we know from movies, uh, as they say, audio is half the experience. We all yes. know this when we go to why do we go to a movie theater? Why do we have a sound system? It's because the visuals aren't enough, right? You need the audio. Um, I would say it's even more so true in virtual reality because what is virtual reality? You're trying to recreate reality in a new space. Inside the headset, you're trying to recreate reality. Well, you know, reality isn't stereo headphones. Reality isn't left and right. The real world is in front of you. It's behind you. It's to the left and to the right, but it's also above you and below you. Okay. That's the real world. So when you're in VR and you're saying, hey, I've taken you to a beautiful landscape or I've taken you to a, an amazing, uh, you know, shopping center inside VR uh, or, you know, or, or to a 
a cave or whatever you may be doing, you better make sure that all those sounds are replicated properly inside the experience. Uh, because otherwise, uh, you know, otherwise it's just, um, it's just like watching something on YouTube. It's only coming from in front of me or something on my headphones. It's only coming from left and right. So making sure that your experiences are properly done in terms of spatial audio really creates the sense of presence, which is, again, is a fundamental task that we're trying to do as, as developers in virtual reality. Um, so to do this, uh, we actually studied this and we actually created an app called Face Your Ears. OK, uh, there's a there's a fun app. Uh, there used to be an app called Face Your Fears, um, which is, you know, it's all scary stuff. And it's kind of it's great. It's a great app. Um, but anyway, we did one called Face Your Ears, which basically was designed to highlight the different aspects, aspects of spatial audio. Uh, things like location based audio, things like distance based audio, like when you move away from something or you get closer to it, it should naturally get louder um, as that object moves it should it should affect where you hear it like in our experience we have a bee or several bees that start buzzing around your head and and it's very important that the bee actually feels like it's moving around your head mm -hmm. and if you go closer to it the bee should sound louder mm -hmm. um, uh, um the doppler effect if you if you remember from physics class right how a train comes and goes by the, the sound is not much and then suddenly and it zooms by, it kind of has a long tail. Um, all of these things are possible in virtual reality if you use the right tools um, to create the sense of realism. So we did face your ears and we created a white paper, which I'll share with Diana and Diana, I, I'm sure you can share it with your audience mm -hmm. on how to choose the right audio spatializer. So when you're programming in Unity, you can actually pick different spatializers to use. You can choose the Oculus or whatever default one, but there's several other ones which are really good, including the one made by Steam. Um, and, um, and, and if you do that, and I strongly encourage you should do it early in your development cycle. It shouldn't be the last thing we do uh, when we're developing a product. You should start thinking about it because you can make differences in the design and implementation of the visuals. Um, if, if you start thinking about the audio and in the end, it's going to be a much better experience. If you see, uh, Moss Book 2 or Notes on Blindness, you know, some of these fantastic experiences, you will see how audio really makes the experience special. Yeah. Yeah. yeah amazing. Mm -hmm. So this uh, tool that you are speaking about, it's sort of like a plugin or something that we can find in Unity or, or how can yes. we find it? Yes, yes, yes. There, there are plugins. They're available. Uh, almost all of them are free. Uh -huh. um, there's some. Uh, Dear VR has one, which I believe is paid, uh, but it's also it's excellent. It's very, it's extremely good. Um, and so you as developers and your audio engineer, if you have one, they, they should be using these tools and experiment with the, and so we did a survey. Um, we basically did for, for our app, face your ears, which I could, you know, I'll share the link also. Uh, it's a free download. Um, is we tried all these different spatializers and we ranked them in terms of what features they had and, 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 and how well they did in different things. But right. you know, it, it's just, it's just a subjective kind of ranking. You, you, sh you should do your own homework. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, they're available. Oh, that's super yeah. exciting. And where can we find Face Your Ears? In, in what uh, platform? Face Your Ears is on the MetaQuest App Lab. Meta it's on App Lab on MetaQuest. So uh, I can share a link and you can uh, um, share it with your audience. Thank uh, you so you much. You can search Face Your Ears, yeah. Yeah, I take note of all of these because those are amazing resources for us as developers learning and learning more to create even better and more realistic, more uh, with the sense of presence experiences. So this is exactly what we were looking for. I noticed as well that you have Concus VR, which is a device yeah. as well mm -hmm. that, uh, yes. that is available there if somebody is interested because I'm pretty sure many developers are also engage with the gaming communities, et cetera, and they might be interested in having more a sense of real, real uh, presence in their right. experiences, even for them, for their own enjoyment. So uh, is, is it a, a product that is available already? 
Yes, yes, yes. So, so Conquest VR is is a uh, virtual reality headphone. Um, so it's designed specifically for virtual reality experiences, ground up designed. Um, and some of the features of it are that it's uh, high res audio certified which means um, it's really built for the future. As VR headsets get better, it goes all the way up to 40 kilohertz in terms of frequency response. Um, it has a highly efficient driver, which is the speaker inside, which sometimes you may notice with the current VR headsets, because the um, audio comes out of the strap, right? These little transducers in the strap, you miss out on some of the details. Um, and you'll get the details if you have proper headphones. These are those headphones. Um, and you get fantastic detail. Uh, of course, the bass is amazing, but you'll also get like the subtleties of, you know, pitter patter of rain or the dragging of something on a floor or a conveyor belt running in the distance. Mm -hmm. Suppose you're creating a training application in a factory and you need to know when the conveyor belt turns on. Um, you know, you, you want to hear it. It's not, it's, it's the sound of a conveyor belt. It's not going to be super loud but you should be able to hear it in its right volume. Mm -hmm. um, so you need good audio amplification. Uh, and, and that's what the Conquest VR headphones do. Uh, plus, they actually mount directly onto the VR headset. So mm -hmm. you don't have to um, um, keep taking them on and off. They actually become part of your headset. Um, mm -hmm. So it's you just keep them on all the time. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the other thing, which I think is very useful for training and even for development, is it gives you gives you a, uh, almost complete privacy. Mm -hmm. So when you're in VR and you're doing your thing, you don't necessarily want people around you hearing what you're doing, nor do you want what they're doing to, to disturb your work or your experience, uh, which, again, can break immersion and also just be a nuisance. Yeah. So they also create a sense of privacy. And, and we found we launched in September. Um, and we're finding a lot of uh, VR enthusiasts who are excited about them and using them already, purchasing them. Uh, we find um, enterprises, training people who are evaluating them for their own use. So, yeah, check it out, Conquest VR. Yep. Thank you so much. That sounds super, super exciting, unfortunately. This is always uh, like a, such a short <laughs> time, it feels like at your time and uh, we deeply respect your time because we know that you're very busy, you don't do your own projects, etc. But we're super excited with inviting anybody to go and check the work that not only Future World Studios is doing, but Conquest VR and of course Ragu, who is uh, the one of the minds behind all mm -hmm. of these amazing um, creations. So thank you so much, Ragu. Is there anything else that you wish I had asked you today? No, Diana, I, I think this is great. I, I think we've covered some good topics and hopefully it adds value to your to your listeners. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. Um uh, inviting everybody to subscribe or to uh, share this episode with somebody who might have a lot of value from it. Thank you so much and see you in the next episode. Bye for now. Yeah.